Hi everyone, it's Vesper, long time no see. I'm sorry about that. I'm always saying that on this channel, I know, but I really am sorry about it. The past month, over a month, has been really, really hectic and... Yeah, as much as I've wanted to make videos, I haven't been able to. And you'll probably see my new family member wandering around making noise or chaos or whatever. Here he is. Yeah, trying to eat my hair. Don't eat my hair, Calcifer. Don't, don't eat my hair. Anyways, this video isn't about him, although he is part of the reason why I haven't been able to make a video. It's October 10th in Japan, and for those of you who don't know, it's World Mental Health Day. And Japan doesn't know it's World Mental Health Day. You might not know that, but anyways, I thought that I would take today as an occasion to update you guys on mental health stuff. And I will straight up say that this video is a sponsored video, but if you have watched my other videos, if you're subscribed to my channel, even if you're not, I hope you know that I would not be making this video a sponsored video unless I really believed in the service in the company that is being offered through this sponsored video. So keep that in mind. So I've made videos in the past on this channel about mental health, my struggle with it, and how particularly this past year year I've been struggling really hard really bad with my mental health depression anxiety and I made a video back in July documenting or just describing how I finally went to a psychiatrist and tried out medication for the first time and it was a long struggle to even get to the point of trying out medication but if you look back at my old video I'll put it around here somewhere I talked about my first visit with the psychiatrist and the first week of being on antidepressants so that was back in July it's now October I've been on antidepressants for the same antidepressant for over three months now and I just want to give you guys an update on that really briefly and then I'll talk about my latest adventure with therapy and if you have watched those previous videos you've probably heard me talk about therapy in the past because I I don't know I feel like on this channel I've talked about therapy always as a skeptic not in terms of therapy in general but specifically in terms of what therapy can do for me in my personal situation and stuff like that but now that I've actually tried it a little bit I want to let you guys know how it's going because it might help you guys too so back in July, I went to, as I said, my first psychiatrist, and he put me on 50 milligrams of sertraline, sertraline. I say put me on, but I, I decided to go with it because literally at that point, I was just, my mental health was so bad that, you know, I felt like nothing could make it worse, but I wanted to try to make it better, so I tried medication. And I was on the 50 milligrams of sertraline, sertraline for a m little over a month. And by that time, it had most of the side effects that I talked about in my other video had more or less disappeared or become manageable enough that I didn't really notice them. Except for one side effect that I actually didn't talk about much in that first video because it didn't really hit me that that was a side effect until after I'd already made that video. That side effect is fidgeting. I think I mentioned it kind of briefly in the other video. I have never been like a really extreme fidgeter or anything, but since being on antidepressants, I fidget a lot more. And I have a fidget cube. I have two now, actually. And I have like three fi fidget spinners or whatever. And I also have this fidget ring. This is the best thing out of the three things I've just talked about. But anyways, I fidget more and I'm restless more, and that has actually exacerbated another really bad self-destructive habit that I've had for forever, which is, and this is gonna maybe be TMI, and you probably don't wanna hear it, I won't go into detail, but I have a really bad problem with skin picking. It was always manageable until, I mean, it's a lot harder to manage now that I'm on antidepressants, especially when I go up in dosages and stuff like that, I literally destroy my skin in the most <laughs> the most terrible ways that I've ever done in my entire life. And 
as you can see, evidence, my face. If you've ever wondered why the skin on my face is just so horrible, now you know because I have a skin picking problem and it's just gotten a lot worse and I'm trying to deal with it, but bear with me. My face looks like shit and it's probably gonna forever look like shit, but it looks especially shitty right now and yeah. Anyways, I was on 50 milligrams of sertraline for a little over a month. And at that point, the effects of it seemed to be almost like non-existent. I think my body got used to the medication and so it stopped being as effective, if effective at all. It felt like I was uh, kind of on the verge, like at any time I could easily fall back into the major depression that I had been in before and that kind of worried me. So when my psychiatrist suggested that I up the dosage a little bit, I said, yeah. And so I went up to 75 mg and I stayed there for, I think a month. And going up to 75, I didn't feel much of a change at all. The symptoms or rather side effects that I had initially gotten when starting that medication didn't really resurface or anything under 75 mg I think because it's such a small incremental increase and I was on that for a month and then I went up to 100 mg and that's where I am right now I've been on 100 for over a month I feel comfortable just sitting at 100 right now I like I said in my other video pills are not a solution magic solution or cure to my depression or anxiety I still have bad days and I still have anxiety that I deal with but it is nothing like what it had been it is much more manageable now and my psychiatrist uh... I have some issues with him kind of sort of because I don't I've heard that this is very much a typical psychiatrist thing that he is very goal oriented results oriented and like he's very focused on remission he keeps saying remission remission oh you're so close look at this improvement and he pulls out a chart a graph of like questionnaires that I've taken throughout this entire time that monitors progress quote unquote and he's like look at this line it's going is your remission it's so close we should go up a little bit you're so close you can get there and i'm just looking at him like you really just you really don't get it remission there is no such thing as remission for my depression anxiety because literally the world society literally the world is what it is, society is what it is, and my place within all of that is what it is, and it's not changing. And if you think that I'm gonna be any less fucking depressed or anxious because of medication, yeah, no. So that kind of annoyed me a lot, and I've very much voiced that annoyance to him, and he's toned it down now. But yeah, that, uh, he's still, you know, he's a psychiatrist. In other news, I have come out to him as non-binary, trans, da, 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 and he took it pretty well, I think, for someone who is very much a psychiatrist. He's okay, but I might change. It's, I don't have a lot of options in the psychiatrist or medication area because, you know, Japan. Speaking of limited options, that brings me to my most recent adventure. As I've mentioned before, I've been very skeptical of therapy, of counseling, and any benefit that it could possibly have for me personally, and that's because of a, a million different reasons. But I recently found out about BetterHelp.com, and that has provided me with resources, access to therapy that I very much did not have before because English speaker, Japan, 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 because Japan. And yeah, I'm really glad I found this site, this service, and that's why I'm going to introduce it to you guys today. So to describe betterhelp.com in a nutshell, it is an online service that seeks to provide more accessible, more affordable mental health services to everyone through online counseling, online therapy. Through betterhelp.com, you have access to, I think it's more than 700 700 licensed certified professional therapists and the really good thing about this especially for someone in my situation is that it provides 
me with access to these services without being in the US, without being in Australia. I have access to English speaking native, English speaking therapists, a large selection of native English speaking therapists, but not just native English speakers. This site is offered in a number of languages, Japanese even. So I think that not only adds to its accessibility because you know so many online resources are specifically focused on English speakers, specifically native English speakers, or they're very localized specific to the US, specific to Australia. This is internationally usable. If you are an expat, if you are not even an expat in your home country, but accessing mental health services, mental health care is difficult for you because you know you don't have transportation, you're way, way outside of the city where the only access to mental health care that you need is findable or whatever, then yeah, this service is a lifesaver. You can use it on your phone, you can use it on your tablet, you can use it on your PC. Another really important thing about this service is that it's LGBTQIA friendly and for me, and I'm sure many of my viewers, that is really, really fucking important. So as soon as you click get started to start signing up for the service, the first thing that they'll ask you in the questionnaire that you have to answer before you sign up is what's your gender. And they don't just put the typical male, female, no. They also have non-binary. And as a non-binary person, that's really affirming. That's really nice to see that there. So once you get through the initial sign-up process, then you are taken to a page where you can specify certain things about the therapist that you work with. So you can specify the gender of the therapist that you work with, you can specify are they religious or not, you can specify if they're gay, you can specify that they have experience with certain things, for example, certain mental health issues or trauma, things like that. That's really important because that is part of the problem that I'm faced with in Japan is that I don't have those options, the ability to specify so much about a therapist that I potentially go to. So I really appreciate that being available on this site. And if, in fact, if that wasn't on this site, I probably wouldn't be using it, to be honest. So I'm really happy about that. And after you choose all of those things, you go through the sign up process completely and you're finished, you will be paired with a therapist within 24 hours or less. And I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same thing, 24 hours or less, how could they possibly find the right match for me? To be honest, I was really skeptical about that because you know, you can go through years and years and years of searching for the right therapist and they're gonna match you with someone in 24 hours or less. But you're paired with that person and you can try them out, get a feel for them, or maybe right off the bat you read their profile and you don't like them. You can change counselors. You are free to change counselors as many times as you like until you find the person that is right for you. That is a big advantage of an online service, I think, because in order to do that offline, you are going from clinic to clinic, person to person, and each time, you know, fees are changing or availability is changing, blah, 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 blah. You, there's so much to deal with, so much more to deal with when you are changing therapist online versus clicking a button and changing a therapist that way. So once you're done with the sign-up process entirely, you've been paired with your therapist, then you have four ways that you can communicate with that therapist. And again, this is like a huge merit to doing this online versus in real life, I feel like, because you can communicate with that therapist through a special chat room that you use through betterhelp.com or the app that they have for phones, tablets. You can do video chatting. So online, on your computer, on your smartphone, you can do video chatting face-to-face. -face. If texting is a problem with, and when I say texting, I mean chatting in a chat room. If that is a problem for you, face-to-face -face over video chat, or you can communicate by phone. Again, you're going to want to, this is an international service, so you're gonna to wanna to watch that phone bill, but you have the option of doing it on a phone. If you wanna spare your data, you don't have a lot of data bandwidth, and you can also do email. 
So if you're not comfortable with chat setting or a live video setting or even talking on the phone, you can use email. And for me personally, this is another huge bonus to doing it online because one of the things that's really hard for me in going to a therapist, even though I have a YouTube channel, I talk about all kinds of personal things to a camera, to my subscribers, to whoever watches my videos, it is a completely different thing to be sitting in a room one-on-one -on -one with someone or even in a group to be face-to-face -face with people and to be talking about these kinds of things. I, it's really, really difficult for me, okay? And I know that makes no sense. I'm telling all kinds of personal information out on the internet to more people, but I don't know, there's just something psychological there. So for someone who is not good at speaking directly to people, having the text option of a chat room or email even, it's much easier for me to communicate what I want to say through text versus verbally. And some people are the other way around, but still might feel the pressure, like awkwardness of being in a room one-on-one -on -one with someone or in a group therapy session. So this is more options for you through online services, technology. Oh my God, look at how far we have come. I haven't talked about yet is cost. And if you're like me living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck, constantly poor, cost is really, really important. And often is one of the biggest barriers from accessing mental health services in general. And I will say, because it's a fact, this service is not free. But they, like I kind of mentioned earlier, they strive to be affordable, accessible. You can access this service from as low as $35 US dollars a week. And if you compare that going to going to a therapist offline in person, you're saving a lot of money. Like even my psychiatrist that I go to in person, one time a month costs several times that. So I want to be clear, yes, this is a sponsored video, but I really, really, really am happy that this service exists at all because like I really can't say how important it is to someone in my position as an expat with everything else added on top of it on top of that to be able to access this from Japan even like I mentioned the LGBTQIA friendliness of it and the other bonuses but also there are therapists who are people of color black, Mexican, Asian, whatever. And they even offer services in other languages. It's not just English. That means a lot to me because, you know, I don't know, there's just something about being a black, non-binary queer person and talking to a, a cis, straight, white guy. There are racial things that I also would like to navigate and I would prefer to do that with someone who is the same race as me. And in Japan, yeah, good luck to me. <laughs> if you are interested in this service, if you want to check out BetterHelp for yourself, which I, if you are in a place of struggling with mental health issues, definitely do give them a try. I will put the link to them in the description. If you use this link, it comes back to me, so you're helping me out, you're helping this channel out. But again, evaluate it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it because I wouldn't just take my word for it. I'd want to try it out for myself too. If you do try it out, by the way, please come back to this video, to the comment section. Let me know. I would love to hear not just about betterhelp.com, but especially about betterhelp.com, your experiences with therapists, because this is my first ever experience with therapy. I am coming at this from a very novice, first-timer amateur point of view. I would love to hear your guys' feedback and yeah, check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Calcifer, my kitten. Maybe you'll get to meet him in a future video if people are interested in hearing about Calcifer. Maybe I'll give him his own video. I don't know. It's Nice to be back here on YouTube again. Thank you guys for watching. It's nice to talk to you guys again. And yeah, spread the word about World Mental Health Day, please, because I didn't know until like really recently, and it would be great if more people did know. So thank you for watching again. I'll see you next time. Bye. Purr, purr, purr. They can't hear you though. This is Calcifer. He is four months old and...
you will see him in literally probably every video from now on. He is literally the official mascot of this channel now. Aren't you, Calcifer? Yes, you are.